continue with the paper two, topic five, electricity and magnetism. Today we're going to solve question number 13 from the document. Here we have a cable consisting of many uh, copper wires is used to transfer electrical energy from a generator to an electrical load. The copper wires are protected by an insulator. The copper wires and insulator are both exposed to electric field. Discuss with reference to charge carriers why there is a significant electrical current only in the copper wire. So if you have a wire, and here you have electrons because it's a copper. I have a free electrons. Copper, it's uh, conductor uh, material and the insulator, insulator material is outside. Insulator, it means it doesn't contact electricity. It doesn't allow current to pass through it, but wire, it has free electrons, it's metal, it allows current to pass through. So if I connect this one to a battery, the battery will push these electrons and it will have electrical current. So the electrical current or the, fra the uh, charge carriers, because of connecting this one to battery, the battery will accelerate these free electrons and I will have current or electricity. B, the cable consists of 32 copper wires. So the number of copper wire N is 32. Each one of them, it has length L 35 kilometer. Each wire, each wire has a resistance of 64 ohm. And the resistivity of the copper rho, the symbol of resistivity rho is 1.7 times 10 to the power negative 8 ohm meter. Calculate the radius of the wire. Since I have a resistance here, a resistivity, so we can use this formula. R equal resistivity rho times the length of the wire divided by the area. First, I need to calculate the area. From the area, we can calculate the radius. So I'm going to swap. Area A will equal rho times L divided by R. Rho is 1.7 times 10 to the power negative 8. Length is 35 kilometer. 35 kilometer, it means 10 to the power 3 meter. All the unit has to be consistent. So here I have SI units, so all of them should be in SI units. Divided by the resistance, our total resistance 64. So the area A will be 9.3 times 10 to the power negative 6 unit, it's meter square. I don't want the area, I want the radius. So area equals pi r square. I need a radius r. r square equals a divided by pi. I divide both sides by pi. I need a radius, so take square root both sides. So R will equal square root area is 9.3 times 10 to the power negative 6 divided by pi. And this will be 1.7 times 10 to the power negative 3 meter or 1.7 millimeter. Okay. There is a current, the value of this current, 730 in the cable. Show that the power loss in one meter of the cable, the power loss in one meter of the cable equals 30 watt. I need the power in per meter, per length. I need to prove the power per length equals 30 watt. Now, first we have to calculate the power dissipated in the cable. The total power dissipated will equal I squared times R. So P I square is 730 squared, but we don't have R. We have the total current. 
I need the current for one cables. I have 32 cables, the number of the cables, 32. So first I have to find R, R, the resistance for one cable will equal the total resistance divided by the number of the cables. Total resistance is 64 and I have 32 cable. So 64 divided by 32, it will give me 2 ohm. Now I can find the power dissipated per unit, per, per Pair unit length. So P pair unit length will equal the total power, which is I square times R divided by L. And this will be 730 square times R2 divided by 35 kilometer, 35 times 10 to the power a three. And this will give us 30.6 watt. The unit power is watt per meter, per meter. Okay. D, when the current is a switch, and this is a tricky question as well. When the current is a switch on in the cable, the initial rate of rise of temperature is 35 milli Kelvin per second. Look at the unit. This is temperature, initial rate of raise. So this is a change in the temperature because I have a raise in temperature. It means I have a change in temperature. And second, it's a unit of time. So this is delta T over time. Why it's over? Because per second, per second. So this equal, 35 milli means times 10 to the power negative 3 Kelvin. The specific heat capacity of the copper, so C for the copper, 390 joule per kilogram per Kelvin. Determine the mass of length of one meter of the copper. So I need mass of length, mass per unit length. Length is one meter. How much? Okay, these are the given. Now, remember the, unit, the formula for uh, heat. Heat Q equals mass times specific heat capacity times change in temperature. I need M per L. So I divide both sides by L, divided by L, divided by L, but L doesn't matter because L is one meter. L is one meter. Even I don't if I, even if I, I don't write it, I didn't write it, it's fine. Okay, so the unit, the formula will become M over L will equal Q over L divided by C times delta T. What did I do? I just divide both sides by C times delta T by C times delta T. Now let's rewrite the unit here. We're gonna just rewrite the formula. M over L equals Q over L divided by C times delta T. In the question, in the question, it's given to me delta T change in temperature divided by change in time. So what I'm going to do to, to get uh, this format, I'm going to, div to divide the equation by delta T, by, by change in time. So here divided by delta T, and here also divided by delta T, okay? From the formula of the power, if you remember power, it's energy over, uh, over time. So energy over time, this is the formula of the power, P over L. So M over L will equal P over L, because this is power, 
over length divided by C times delta T to change in temperature divided by time. Now let's substitute P over L. If we calculate it from here. P over L is 30.6. We can assume it's 30. So 30 or 30.6 is fine. So 30 divided by specific heat capacity is 390. Change in temperature divided by change in time from the question is 35 times 10 to the power negative 3. And this will give us 2.2 kilo, kilogram in one meter. This is the mass of one length. So this is N or pair one meter. Two point the mass per one meter, it's 2.2 kilogram. Okay, <clears throat> now I have uh, uh, last part of the question calculate the power dissipated. Calculate the power dissipated. The power dissipated, you'll calculate it for always from this formula I square times the uh, resistance. Okay. I squared times resistance, and that's it. See you, inshallah, in next video. Next time, we'll solve another video, also from the same document. We will have like two or more questions uh, left, and then we're done with the electricity for now. After that, we'll start with the waves, inshallah.